Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org, and this is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. The Cube is a live mobile studio. We come into events. We're here at Knowledge, ServiceNow's big customer event. We're here at the Aria Hotel in Las Vegas, and we've got wall-to-wall -wall coverage uh, today, tomorrow, and part of Thursday. Uh, as many of you know, we were at Sapphire Now, the big SAP customer show. We're simulcasting that on SiliconANGLE 2. But we're here in Las Vegas. The ServiceNow conference is all about transformation, transforming from no to now. And we've kind of got a double whammy segment here. Virtually every industry is transforming and certainly big pharma is transforming quite dramatically as well as the IT components of many industries. Ross Rexer is here, he's the managing director at KPMG, the global consultancy, and T. Juan Lumpkin, who's an IT practitioner for Eli Lilly. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for Dave. So Ross, let's start with you. Um, at a high level, what's happening in the pharmaceutical industry in general, big pharma, how is the industry itself transforming? And then we'll get into the IT piece. Sure, so, um, and many of the big pharmas find themselves uh, today in a, in a situation that is uh, unique to their, their business and, and their, their industry and market where uh, a lot of uh, block, blockbuster drugs which have been significant sources of revenue over the years uh, are starting to come off that. And uh, with, uh, with that, it brings competition and a loss of revenue. So, so the, the big pharmas are, are all in a, a very uh, coordinated, methodical um, uh, process right now to, to resize their business and at the same time uh, enable the R&D function to bring new drugs to market, uh, focusing on uh, patient outcomes that uh, uh, will happen in different ways than they, they've probably ever done before. So the business model itself has changed. Um, and uh, along with it, uh, all the support functions like IT are forced to. So in that, it's all, it's all about mm -hmm. the pipeline, it's right? All about the and pipeline. and, and the, the challenge, if I understand it, is that, that historically you got the big pharma companies, they would you know, go, do about, go about their thing and, and develop these drugs and they'd get a blockbuster and it was a relative today, a relatively slow paced environment. Okay. That's, that's changing, if I understand it correctly. What's driving that change? So the, the innovation around uh, medicines today uh, is much different than it has, uh, has been over the last 10, 20 years uh, in that the, the composition around uh, and the use of different biotech components to create, a, uh, to create medicines uh, is now being sourced in different ways. Historically, uh, pharma built itself and really invested in, and was really a, a research and development company almost entirely in-house. Right, so all the support systems and everything in the way the, the business was run was around that. Nowadays, these, the pharmas uh, are collaborating with smaller providers, um, and, and many of them, uh, in ways that, uh, again, they, they, they just historically have never done. Everything was done in-house to, uh, to, to bring drugs to market, and now it's, it's, uh, it's shifted absolutely to the opposite side, where uh, big pharmas are relying on these providers, these third-party providers, for all stages of R&D, and ultimately FDA and the release of these, these drugs. So T1, I introduced yeah. you as an IT practitioner mm -hmm. at Lilly. Um, so talk about more specifically about your role there. Are you focused on infrastructure and IT generalist, or talk so, a little more about that? Yeah, so my roles are about service integration. So think about those services that we deliver to our internal customers within Lilly, and how do we do that across our complex ecosystem? Well, you have multiple different IT departments, you have multiple suppliers, you have different regs and complexities in that space, and so our job is how do we minimize that complexity for our internal business partners, and making sure that the way we deliver over IT is seamless for our internal customers. Okay, so uh, we heard Ross talking about the, the pressures in the, in the industry from, a, from an IT practitioner standpoint. What, how does that cha change your life? Uh, what are the drivers and what is it, what's the business asking you to do? Well, just like anyone, we, we, we need more volume, but we also have to do that under, under constraints. So for us, it's how do we get more efficient? So if you think about the space that we've gone under, you, you can only do so much outsourcing, you can only do so much change, and so you have to see, how do I start running my business more efficiently? And I think that's the, the big shift in IT is you're, we're moving from, a, uh, from an internal infrastructure tower to truly looking at how do we deliver IT services. And part of delivering IT services is making sure that we're a value-added partner and also making sure that we're competitive with other uh, sources that our businesses have to get services from an IT perspective. Yeah, so 10 years ago, we used to talk a lot about demand management. Uh -huh. and demand, it's, That's why I love this from now, from no to now, because demand management essentially ended up just being no. We just can't yeah. handle the, the volume. So you mentioned constraints, so you've got constraints, mm -hmm. you've got to be more efficient. So 
So talk a little bit about what you did to get yeah. more efficient. For us, it, it was all about standardization. So how do, we, how do we build standardization across our IT infrastructure and ecosystem within our IT partners and for our external IT partners? And what that does, it gives us flexibility so that we can deliver our systems and be more agile. When you think about our internal space, we had a lot of complexity. We had multiple procedures, multiple processes, different business units operating um, or delivering IT services in a, an inconsistent manner. What we've been able to do is we've been able to streamline that. We've been able to be more consistent internally and align on a common set of processes and how we deliver those IT services to our customers. So Ross, you're talking about the sort of changing dynamic of what I would call sort of the pharmaceutical ecosystem, right? right. So, so that's, that sounds like it's relatively new in, in pharma. It used to be sort of a go it alone, the big guys, hey, we're multi-billion dollar companies, we don't need these little guys. And you see all these startups coming out, they're really innovative, they're faster. So take us through sort of how that's evolving, how companies are dealing with the ecosystem and wh what kind of pressures that puts on IT. What are you seeing out there? So as T1 was, was mentioning as well, <clears throat> this, this push into IT service integration as, as a, you know, kind of one of the next frontiers of now, uh, right? Being able to have the single pane of glass, single system of record of IT, and our ability to, to bring standardized services up and down uh, in, a, in a coordinated and consistent way has allowed for the, the bigger, more monolithic type companies in, be able to interact with, with uh, these, these smaller, more agile, more tech savvy, if you will, uh, partners. Um, and be able to not overburden them. So the little provider who has maybe less, uh, less overhead of IT infrastructure and their processes would find it hard to be able to collaborate electronically with a big pharma uh, if we had to adopt the big pharma's old style processes. So service integration is, is all about allowing for the, the easy plug and play of these providers mm -hmm. and establishing uh, the, the, the reference set of processes and the supporting data that's needed to govern those transactions or the, the, the length of the, of the outsourcing arrangement with, with that provider um, in a way that doesn't again, overburden them but provides the company, uh, the, the big pharma, the ability to have transparency, the ability to see risks before they're, they're happening and to, and to manage their costs. So talk about your practice a little yep. bit. Um, how do you, what role do you play? Uh, it's obviously you've got this so increasingly complex ecosystem right. evolving. They've definitely got different infrastructures. Yep. Um, how do you sort of mediate all this? So at KPMG, what our, uh, our go-to-market offering and our solution set um, is, is based around a set of uh, leading practices that, that we have uh, established over the past 17 years, for example, that we've been in the IT service management consulting and advisory business. So we have these accelerators um, that we can we bring to uh, a, a project, an engagement like, uh, like the one we're, we're at Eli Lilly, where we can quickly, faster than ever, establish a common ground for those processes, um, uh, the operational processes, first and foremost, that would, don't require years and years of consultancy process engineering the way we do it 20 years ago type of thing. So our role in that is to provide the basis for the, the, our, the operating model that's going to go forward and allow the, 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 the uh, core customer as well as these other providers to get there faster, to get operating faster. So T1, we've been hearing a, a similar pattern from the customers that we've talked to. Mm -hmm. A lot of stovepipes, a lot of legacy you know, tools, uh, a, a, a lot of uncoordinated sort of activities going going on. Is that what, what Lily would, would would you describe that as an accurate de depiction of the past? Or I think I think that I think you're being kind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're kind on the queue. We don't like to beat our guests up. <laughs> so, uh, well, I think, it, and not to overuse the ERP for IT term, but it's, this is something IT we've done for our business partners over the years. We haven't done for ourselves. You think about the the SAPs of the world, where you give your CI, CFO a one-click look at the the financial assets of the company. You think about from a CRM perspective. We've done that for our sales force. Um, we've done that from an HR perspective, but we haven't taken the time to look at it from an IT perspective. And how do I give the CIO that same visibility? across our portfolio of services so that he can ask those same questions, he can have that same visibility. So I want to I uh, add a little color to this whole ERP for IT though. Now of course, on the one hand, you know, the sort of single system of record, that's a positive, but when you think of ERP, I say we were at SAP Sapphire, <laughs> there's a lot of complexity yeah. in, in ERP, and with that type of complexity, you'd never succeed. But mm -hmm. so, 
What's your experience been thus far with regard to you know, the complexity? It's, it, my sense is it's not this big monolithic system, it's a cloud-based, SaaS-based system. Talk about that a little bit. Well, for us, it, 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 getting to a set of standards has actually helped reduce the complexity. Where you have complexity is when you have multiple business procedures across the organization delivering services. And so to get to that single source, that single record, it, it, it has actually helped reduce a lot of complexity on our part, help it make it easier for us to deliver customer uh, service to our customers. The other piece of that too is just the, 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 the singularity of vision of how we deliver IT. So right now within our business, where depending on what area you're in, you may get IT services delivered slightly differently from each area. We've been able to streamline that and say, this is how you're going to receive IT services and make it a more predictable experience for our internal users. Uh, so Ross, I want to talk about this notion of a single system of, yep. of record. Before I ask you why it's so important, what, what, what are we talking about here? Because today you've got a single system of record for your transactions, you might have a single system of record for your, you know, your data warehouse, you have all these single systems of, right. of record. So what do you mean by a single system of record? So when we're talking with you know, ServiceNow and specifically in the IT service management um, domain, what we're talking about is having integrated um, uh, the capability to see data across the different uh, data domains, if you will. So operational data, performance data, and service level data with that, uh, coupled with the IT finance data, as well as, as, as T1 uh, put, uh, the, uh, the 360 deg uh, degree vision of your assets as well. So linking all those sources to, uh, of data to, together in a, in a way that can be used for analytics, maybe for the first time ever. So we, we, uh, we use the analogy of IT intelligence, right? So what we've given our business partners is business intelligence uh, over the years. <clears throat> IT's never had that. So the, the ability to provide IT intelligence that allows for the, the leadership to, to, to have data, have information that they can take decisions and then ultimately become predictive with that, right? So be able to have the knowledge to know what we're doing and make the right choices, and in the future be able to, to do some predictive analysis, again, back to your, your point about the demand side, right? Which we really never got 100% right over the years. We've talked about it a lot, but um, having the ability to, to understand the consumption and have the levers to influence demand and see it um, down the road. I want to go back to this business process discussion. You were sort of referenced the 20 years ago, the whole right, right. BPO uh, uh, movement. Um, and, and you know, business process reorganization. Um, it seems to me that what, what occurred was you had, let's say, a database or some kind of system, and maybe there was a module, and then you'd build a business process around that. Um, and so you had relatively inflexible business processes. They were hard to change. Is, uh, are you seeing that change? Are we at the cusp of the dawn of a new era where I can actually create whatever business process I want to around that single system of record? Is that truly a vision that's coming to fruition? Uh, we believe uh, it is, and, and in our experience, it, it, is, it is starting to happen, and I think ServiceNow with their platform uh, is, is one of the, the emerging uh, leaders in this space that's allowing for that to, to, to happen quite frankly, Dave. So you have, you have a, a, a concise platform that allows you enough flexibility to build new processes, but has the common data structure, has the common user interface, has the common workflow set, and, and, uh, um, and all wrapped in an easy to maintain type of platform is what I think 20 years ago we, we wished we had and we tried to build um, in many different ways and co ended up mostly cobbling things together. But uh, we, we really believe that, and, and again, are starting to see success out there, Dave, that um, the, the platform question um, is, is solved and that we're now able to get to the process. Yeah, I mean, historically we, we you know, delivered value, plenty right. of value. The problem is so much of that value was sucked up yeah. by the infrastructure and, right. and, and not enough went into the innovation around it. Right. Uh, Timon, my question to you is so, people don't like change, I mean, naturally. Um, now maybe it's different in, in, in IT. Maybe they want change in IT, but did you see initial resistance, oh no, we have the, this way of doing it, we don't want to change, or are people enthusiastic about change? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you, you hit it spot on, and, and absolutely, the, the technology is the easy part of it, it's really the change part that's, that's the most difficult piece of it. And I would say we've gone through a lot of work just to align the organization, and we've had a lot of support for, from not only our internal IT people, but also our senior leadership team. So we've gotten support, we've seen a lot of buy-in, not saying it's still gonna, not going to be easy, not going to be easy, 
but I feel that we've got the right momentum now to make this type of change to uh, to get the business volume. And part of it is being able to articulate the value that we're going to receive from 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 this initiative. So it's early days for for Lilly. I mean, you guys sort of just got, got started on this journey, not yesterday, but you know, you, yeah. you're in an, in for, far enough that you've got enough experience to give some advice to your fellow practitioners. So I'm going to ask you guys both. Uh, 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 start with T1. What advice would you give to fellow practitioners that are looking to move in this direction? Mm -hmm, great. I would say, first of all, you got to have the business alignment. So I need to make sure that you can clearly articulate the value of the change to the company. So I can, I can talk not in terms of process, but in terms of outcomes that we're going to drive for our business partners. Once you're able to describe those outcomes, then you can have the conversation of what's the work it's going to take to get there. Because it, it's not an easy journey, so I need to be able to paint that picture accurately for, for our teams. And also talk about how we're going to support them through the process. And so we're going to talk about the value, we're going to, we're going to paint the picture of the journey, and we're also going to tell you how we're going to support you throughout that process. Okay, Ross, you're talking to CIOs. What's your, yep. what's your main point of advice for CIOs in this regard? Uh, is look at uh, the transformation as transformational, right? So it's, it's, it can be a set of tactical projects and tactical wins based on outcomes that, that you're, you're looking for. However, to, in order to truly uh, change the way your IT uh, functions, runs as a business, do all these, these great things that we're talking, uh, we're talking about today is you have to have the vision uh, and, and, and understand that uh, it is there are a series of building blocks that will, will get you incremental value along the way, but this is not a quick uh, you know, product slam uh, that, that, again, maybe 20 years ago it was about let's swap this software for that software and we're going to be good. Uh, it's, it's not about that and that's not going to get you uh, to transformation. So it's about transformation, it's about the metrics to be able to prove yes. that you are transforming and continuous improvement. Uh, Ross T1, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your story. Uh, we could go on forever, we're getting the hook, but I uh, really appreciate you guys coming on. Thanks, thanks for having All us. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll be right back with our, our next guest. Uh, Chris Pope is here, uh, who's the Director of Product Management for ServiceNow. So we're going to double click on the platform and share with you some greater information about that. This is theCUBE, I'm Dave Vellante, we'll be right back.